There was an interesting opinion piece though in the Fin Review today from psychiatrist Tanvir Ahmed. It was about how the voice proposal is basically one big national group therapy session. I hadn't thought about it like that, John Roskam, but it is a fairly apt way of looking at it. I mean, we've got a proposal that's meant to make us all feel like we've helped Indigenous Australians, but there's not one single practical outcome as a result of it. That's therapy with no oh, look, accountability. Look, that's exactly right, Corey. And I'd go a little bit further than that, and I think Tanvir analysed it correctly. Um, this is a political process. I think what we now need to have a discussion about is the fact that the Prime Minister should consider withdrawing his proposal if this referendum change was designed to bring Australians together, then you would start when you have 60, 70, 80 per cent support. He clearly does not have that. The 1967 referendum was supported by 90.77 per cent of those who voted. Uh, if the referendum fails, if, as Tanvir said, this psychological process doesn't succeed, it's going to set reconciliation back. It will destroy much of the goodwill between uh, Australians um, and it will send a terrible signal to all of us to move forward. And that's the discussion we now need to have. The Prime Minister saying he got this wrong, the ground has not been prepared, Australians are not ready, there is no detail, there has been not enough discussion, it's been a political process and we now need a change of course. The only thing I'd add Australians to are not racist I... and that's why they no. won't support a racist measure. That's my view on it. John Anderson, what did you have to say? I was just going to make this point. I mean, I think it's really, really important to state that what the polling does show in that soft yes vote, and so for all the research shows, Australians do want to help. It's not that they're against doing constructive things. They're dismayed by the problem we're confronted with. But don't accuse them of being racist if they say they don't like the model that's being put forward because there are many senior Aboriginal people who don't like the model being put forward either. And some of them have a voice in Parliament already, but they're being ignored. Hey, John Anderson, though, let me follow up on that because we've got levels of bureaucracy dedicated to improve Aboriginal Indigenous standards in this country. As you say, I don't think anyone really begrudges that. But year after year after year, the results aren't getting better. Sometimes they're going backwards. Shouldn't it be a priority to fix these things before you start meddling with our constitution? Well, your whole problem is that... Uh, I don't want to misquote Peter Sutton. I'm only a very, very thoughtful man who's written very extensively on the politics of suffering, and I'm trying to get my mind around his brilliance at the moment. But I think it's fair to say that that he expresses deep concern that there's a lot of evidence now that in many Aboriginal communities you've gone backwards, not forwards, under what would be described as a progressive agenda. And I say the problem with the progressive agenda, and you hear it everywhere in the dinner parties, I'll say, oh, no, 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 they're not doing well at school because their teachers are racist. Really? Have they been out to those remarks? Some of the people who are so dedicated to doing everything they can, motivated by anything except racism, to give the kids a go. I mean, the, the, the Chardonnay socialists set on this are so naive, but the thing they will not grapple with, because they've been so keen to say family doesn't matter, even to destroy family, is that it's that home environment that those precious little kids are brought into that is now so horrible in some of those communities. The kids don't stand a chance of growing up in emotional security into emotionally contained and, and fulfilled people. And until you grapple with that problem, and if there's one group of people who, by definition, are far removed from that, it's bureaucrats, they're also disinterested and often opposed to talk about the environment in which children grow up in. But the reality is that responsibility by, drives, starts and stops with the people who bring children into the world. They've, they've got to be provided with an Quite environment. Right. Carrots and sticks to do it properly.